Hey everyone, and I'm traveling to tropical islands in search of new adventures and testing my survival skills. I will spend a whole week on this island, and my main task is to find food and fresh water to survive. But I still have plenty of these bugs left, and I can share them with someone if they want. Just write in the comments. You know, when I watched Bear Grylls shows, I was inspired by him. I really enjoyed his episodes, but it's one thing to watch and another to try to be in his shoes, to experience how challenging it actually is. The ocean is very murky, and there's a high tide again, causing big waves. Always relying on spearfishing would be wrong, so I'll make a fishing line trap. Even when the water is murky, I can set traps or use the same fishing line for crabs or fish. So today, let's make another trap. There's a very tall palm tree here with coconuts. But climbing up there is not easy. After getting bitten once, I didn't become Spider-Man, so I don't want to risk it. I'll search under the palm tree. Maybe I'll find some fallen coconuts that haven't gone bad yet. There are a lot of snails here, and it's quite humid. I'll have something to eat just in case, but I really want to find coconuts. I see some broken nuts, but I'd prefer to find fresh and whole ones. Look, there are plenty of vines here that I'll need to make my fishing line trap for crabs or fish. I have to move carefully, making noise so that snakes and other creepy crawlies hear me coming and go away to avoid any conflict. Unfortunately, the vine broke in the middle, and it smelled awful. I shouldn't linger here because mosquitoes are biting. Oh, this one looks like a rope. It's a good vine. I wish I had more like this. It would be great. I've managed to collect only a few vines so far. The mosquitoes are biting hard, so I need to move to another spot where they weren't bothering me before.
I caught my first prey. It's small, I know, but I have no other choice. It's better than eating insects. While the tide is still in, I can catch these little ones. I hope to catch something bigger. There was one more, but it got away. I'll leave this one here in a pit so it won't escape while I go back to the ocean. There's another one, also small, but that's good enough. I'm happy. <sighs> Come here. Well, this is a good snack. I'll roast it, eat it, and then I can continue making the fishing line trap. I enjoy this kind of fishing. It's a whole different experience. This is roughly what the outline of the future peak looks like. Similar to how I braided the sun lounger, I'll be weaving it in a checkered pattern in a circle. This way, everything will be completely enclosed, forming a cone-shaped bowl. There will be an entrance from the bottom side, and here will be a dead end where fish will swim in and get trapped. 
allowing me to work and work. This is how it's turning out so far, my peak. I need to keep working, gather more lianas and climb higher. It will take a cone shape. And here, on this side, it will have an opening. Well, that's basically it. Here's an interesting find. Whoa. It was a flat tail, just like the one I encountered at night. A deadly and very unpleasant creature of the underwater world. It's not aggressive towards humans, but if you step on it or touch this snake somewhere, its bite can be fatal. Look, my friends, this is what I was talking about. It has a very small mouth and a very small head. Somewhere there are venomous fangs and deadly glands. One should never be bitten by one of those fangs. It can end fatally. It's very dangerous if an animal eats the head of this snake or if someone accidentally steps on a dead snake's head. Things can go very wrong. Of course it's evident that this snake has been lying here for a long time and I don't know the condition of its venomous glands. But the risk is always there and it's not worth tempting fate. One thing I know for sure is that I need to bury it somewhere so that no animal will eat it and get sick. Or I won't accidentally step on it in an emotional moment without noticing. Look at its color and scales. And a completely flat tail, which they use like fish use fins to move more easily underwater. The color, of course, speaks for itself that the snake is very dangerous and don't come near me. But for some reason it died. And we need to take it and bury it somewhere in a pit. so that no other animals eat it or get poisoned. I hope no animals will find it here and it won't harm anyone. The high tide forced me to move to a different location because it flooded everything there. Now, let's prepare our lobsters. I'll tidy up a bit here, set up a fire in the shade and cook my treat. I'll make the fire as usual. First, I take a coconut shell make a small house from twigs on top then I put this cotton or whatever it is I don't know here for ignition I use a flint to get a spark which ignites the fibers on the coconut shell after that it's all standard procedure Great. This technique never fails. While the fire is catching, let me show you how to clean the lobsters. I've shown it before, but it won't hurt to review. I break off the antennae. Here and here, this part. I don't know its name, write it in the comments. 
one, two, three, four, and all of its intestines are in these antennae. You can cook it in this state. The firewood is burning nicely. I have some good charcoal now, and I think it will be enough to cook two lobsters. So let's get started. This time, I won't cut the tails. I'll leave all the juices inside and just place it on the coals in the shell. Let it roast inside. Oh, today, I'm going to enjoy my meal. Yeah. Some of you commented that cooking a dead lobster is not allowed. Can you please tell me if it's true and why? I can't just put it alive on the coals. That's not humane. So I kill it first and then cook it. Ooh. Here it is, the reward I deserved. But this handsome piece of meat is already cooked. And I can partly see and anticipate its taste. how I want to eat it as quickly as possible. I had to take the female as well, my friends, sorry about that. Otherwise, I would have definitely released her. But survival is at stake, so we must take whatever food we manage to catch today, be it a female or male, without discrimination. If you have the chance and caught a female, it's better to release her so she can reproduce. Well, it's time to enjoy my dish. Oh, the aroma is delightful. Oh yeah, this is something else. Friends, life is good. Mm. Just look at this piece, and you know what I've realized. I shouldn't overcook them. The meat becomes tough, but now it's magically tender and juicy. Mm. I don't need to say anything, it's just incredibly delicious. Mm. I should come here more often to eat this instead of grasshoppers. How about that? It's hot. I grab the head and make a swift move. Taking a juicy piece of meat. By the way, I put the head back. There's some liquid in there. Let it cook a bit more. And I'll eat the head too. There's nothing but a lot of sand in the row. Look. Look, what can I say? I don't want to go home just yet. I want to eat like this every day. Please, lobster, be caught more often. Mm. This is a paradise. Mm. 
Now, feeling strong, energized, and in a great mood, I can confidently continue my adventure further. 